In this video, we'll talk about turning your band into a wedding band. Now, you can still play your other gigs with your band, but it might be worth at least considering doing wedding receptions because they pay really well. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is think about your song list. Do you have a lot of dance music as part of your sets? You're going to need a lot of dance music to play at a wedding reception. A lot of it's going to be sort of classic 70s and 80s dance stuff. You want to be prepared to do that kind of stuff. Um, and you can look out on the web to see what other bands are doing at those kind of events and get a pretty good idea of what kind of stuff to be doing. Um, and most of it is pretty easy. You should be able to pick it up pretty easy with your band. Uh, and as long as you can pull it off, then uh, you can make really good money and it's worth, worth considering. What kind of equipment do you need? Probably the same stuff that you use in your bar gigs. If you've got a decent PA system, you've got some subwoofers, uh, you can bring your full band. It's really not much different from playing any other kind of a bar gig uh, where you've got the full setup on stage. About the only difference would be somebody has to provide a stage. That's usually not the band. You know, unless you want to go buy a whole portable stage, which is not something I recommend, usually that's up to either the venue that they're renting for the wedding or the bride and groom, you know, bring in some uh, vendor to come set up a stage. It's not something you have to worry about. But if you've got a full PA system and a full band and you're doing gigs, then you're all set equipment wise to do, to do weddings like this. How much money can you make doing a wedding like this? Well, here in the Southeast, I'm in Florida, uh, you can get anywhere from 1500 to 3000 bucks for a typical wedding. Now, some can pay more, but it's very rare. Usually it's going to be in that range, 1500 to three grand. 2500 would be a pretty common number for a wedding. And if you've got, you know, four or five people in your band, you're doing pretty well. How often can you get booked? Well, weddings are mostly on Saturdays and it's also seasonal. Uh, the seasons for weddings are, you know, springtime is the most common season for weddings. That's when everybody wants to get married. Uh, but anywhere from January to about May, uh, you can get pretty busy doing weddings during that period. It starts to slow down during the hot months in summer, and then it picks up again in the fall. So, you know, September, October, November, and then very few people get married in the middle of the holiday, you know, Christmas season. Uh, so you've got about eight or nine months there where, where weddings tend to occur, and they're mostly on Saturday. It's usually, let's say, 5.30 for the wedding, and the reception will start at like seven o'clock and go to like midnight. Um, Every once in a while, you'll have a wedding on a Friday or a Sunday, but most of the time it's on a Saturday. So there is sort of a limit to how many days per year you could get booked up. And the way you do get booked up is to get yourself listed on wedding websites. There's lots of uh, wedding websites out there. The, these are companies that specialize in this kind of stuff. They're selling dresses. They keep track of the venues and all that kind of stuff. And these are companies like The Knot and there's other big companies. All you have to do is go on Google and look up wedding, pretty much anything, and you'll see all these companies listed there. So what you want to do is go to their website and then find the vendor section and get yourself listed under musicians or bands or whatever they have in their categories. Uh, put together a, a photo and a link to your website, a description, a contact information, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you definitely want to have some kind of a website, just, just a simple page. It does, you don't want anything really elaborate because you don't want you know, people to be wasting time having to drill down through various pages. Really just the front page should have all the information, it should have a good photo and maybe a, a good video if, you, if you've got a good performance video that shows you in action. Um, you probably want to have some kind of a, a, a list of songs that you do commonly play um, and then obviously have the contact information. Um, how to get in touch with you because then when they can then they can call you and ask questions and you can work out the details about the performance and the show and what kind of songs they want you to play what time to go on all that kind of stuff as far as the band members now if you're playing in a bar band it's possible that your particular bar band may not be exactly right for playing uh, a wedding event you may have some extra members or too many members in the band you may have two or three guitar players which may not necessarily be appropriate for a wedding band maybe you don't need that many you know if you're a rock band you've got to maybe modify that for the wedding scene maybe you don't need all that uh, instead what you might want to do is pick a few key members to be your wedding band uh, so to be sort of a core of that band and then bring in some other members to kind of highlight that. And here's a couple of great suggestions. If you play in a band that's all guys or mostly guys, um, it's really, really valuable if you could get a female singer for your wedding act. Now that doesn't mean that she has to necessarily sing all the songs, but if it, if she can at least be on the stage with you and if she can be in your promotional photo, that's worth gold. That's, that's, that's a big selling point for a wedding band. Um, and if you can have some other odd instrument like a brass instrument, a saxophone or a trumpet player like that, 
then it makes you look a little bit more like a variety band. Now that doesn't mean that those, those extra members are necessarily core members of the band, because what you can then do is you can have them in your photo on your web page, but then when the customers go to contact you, you can offer them some different price points. So the full band with those special members costs, you know, the maximum amount, let's say $3,000, right? But you can offer them, hey, you can have a smaller or cheaper band option that doesn't have the horn player. Uh, and that only costs this much. And then this one doesn't have the female singer and that only costs that much. So then you just, you could then get it down to your core band and you're charging them less, but you're still making pretty good money for your core band. One last tip that I like to put out about getting paid for weddings. You want to get paid everything in advance. Um, whether that's, you know, if you can get a deposit, that's best. Uh, if you actually, the, what's best is if you can get paid in full in advance, that would be best. But if you can at least get a deposit, that way your date is locked in and they're not going to cancel on you at the last minute. Um, but even when you get to the venue, you know, for the, the balance of payment, you want to get paid before it even begins. You, what you don't want to do is get paid after. You don't want to be trying to chase people down during a reception when everybody's drunk and people are going home and, oh, the person who was supposed to pay you already took off. And now you get, you know, you chase, you don't want to have to get into that situation where you're having to chase down your payment. And you certainly don't want to be uh, taking a check that might bounce later on. So if you're going to get paid, you know, a balance on the wedding day, the balance should be in cash and it should be before the event begins. So basically you want to make sure that all your payment is done before you ever even set foot on stage, before you ever even start bringing equipment in. Take care of it all in advance. You'll, you'll be much better off for it, for it and you'll save yourself a lot of headache. So those are my tips for getting started with your potential wedding band and I hope you're successful doing that. I hope you can make great money doing that. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, put those below. And of course, hit the like button and the subscribe and the little bell and all the things you always do with YouTube videos. And we'll see you next time.